Whoa, this is sort of different, isn't it? Uh, yeah, guys, what's going on? It's been, it's been quite some time since I've talked to you last. Um, I, as you guys could tell, I've been unactive on my YouTube channel for about the past six months, and I'm so sorry about that. I've just, I've just been very, very busy lately with school and everything going on, and I just couldn't balance both of them at once. I just needed to focus on my schoolwork for a little while before I came back to YouTube. Luckily, I'm ready to start making YouTube videos up again. As you could get, as you guys can see, a lot has changed uh, in the movie room. I moved some things around a little bit. Uh, I uh, added a new things in the collection, like this kids poster right over here, and I got glasses, which I'm still trying to get used to. But anyway, I'll get used to them as time goes on. But anyway, guys, let's go over everything that I got through the months of January through April of 2017. Now, I did film a video uh, for the January and February Blu-ray haul of 2017. I, I have not uploaded it yet. In fact, I haven't edited it yet. I just haven't had time to. I've been very busy. But uh, I'm going to put it in this video. I'm going to uh, show you guys what I got in J from January and February. I'm going to show you guys that video that I made a few months back. And then you guys are going to come back here into present time where I'm going to show you everything that I got between March and April. April. So anyway guys, enjoy. What's going on guys? Gibbs here. Today I'm here to bring you guys my January and February uh, haul for tw 2017. Um, I picked up a lot of titles in February, not so much in January, so that's why they were, uh, that's why I didn't post a separate video for January. But anyway, let's get into it with, uh, without wasting any time. Let's get into the p pickups that I got in January. Alright, starting off with the bang, we have one of my all-time favorite movies. I recently watched it and I fell in love with it. It is Matt Johnson's The Dirties. Um, if you guys haven't seen The Dirties, it is absolutely phenomenal. And if you want to get into the film industry, watch The Dirties because I, you could learn so much from it on uh, low-budget filmmaking. And it is absolutely outstanding. Matt Johnson is a genius. He recently just came out with this show called Nirvana the Band the Show, which is based off a web series that he did. But uh, the man's an absolute genius. Uh, this film is one of my all-time favorites now. It is just so chilling, but has like a underlying, uh, like an underlying theme of dark humor in it. I think it's really awesome. It's a movie made for uh, made for film lovers. So if uh, you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, it's on Netflix. I can't really say much about the Dirties without spoiling the plot, so just go watch it. It's an absolute masterpiece. And yeah, I would definitely go into this without knowing anything at all because you'll be, you'll be absolutely blown away so let me know what you think of the dirties up next is his second film, Operation Avalanche. This came out last year, and I'm sad that this never came out with the Blu-ray release, but oh well, uh, the DVD will do. And yeah, this is this is another fantastic film on budget filmmaking, and you could definitely learn a lot from this film as well. I think that you could learn a lot more from The Dirties than you can this, but still, this is an absolutely fantastic film, one of my favorites from last year. And yeah, this is really where Matt Johnson really starts to get his footing, and it just, uh, he perfects a lot of things. It has one of the greatest uh, car chases, uh, chase scenes and I, that I've seen in a long time. And yeah, it's just a very, very fantastic movie. It's about two CIA agents that basically go undercover as two documentary filmmakers. And both of these films, The Dirties and uh, Operation Avalanche, are um, mockumentary, which is really awesome. So yeah, go check it out if you haven't. It's just really awesome. And yeah, I think you guys will both really enjoy these movies, so check them out if you haven't. Up next is an A24 release. This film came out last year, and I think it's absolutely fantastic. It is American Honey. Uh, American Honey, um, I really didn't know anything about it when I went into it, and it was absolutely outstanding. Definitely a film to watch more towards the summertime, I feel like, but man, it was just filmed as very... I don't know, it was just very, very depressing, to be honest with you, but it was still absolutely... At absolutely outstanding. Shia LaBeouf gives probably the best performance of his career. Um, but yeah, this is just uh, such an outstanding film directed by Andrea Arnold. She also directed Fish Tank, which I have not gotten around to see yet. But man was uh, American Honey awesome and has an awesome slipcover. Very cool. And yeah, um, what do you call it? I love the A24 releases. They've released some of my favorite films, to be honest. They released... They released Spring Breakers. I can't really pull it out right now, but they released Spring Breakers, which is one of my all-time favorite films. And yeah, I don't know. The, check out American Honey if you haven't. It's absolutely outstanding. So yeah, check it out. 
Up next, I found, finally found it with the slipcover. I could not find it anywhere. It's it's a film classic. It's James Cameron's Titanic. This is the 3D version. I found this at Best Buy with uh, with the slipcover, which is very awesome. And yeah, what what is there to say about Titanic that hasn't already been said? It's it's a classic and. I really do love it. I haven't seen it in a long time, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to get around to it soon. And yeah, it's just an awesome slipcover. Uh, but yeah, awesome movie. Uh, I'm sure everybody's probably seen this film. And yeah, it's one of the greatest romance movies of all time. Up next is Paul Thomas Anderson's Magnolia. Um, this is a blind buy. I have not seen this yet, but I just recently delved into his filmography. And man, this guy is a fantastic director. I can't wait to check this film out. It's like three hours long, but I feel like I'll love it. So yeah, that is Magnolia. Up next is a, um, an Oscar-winning film. It won three Academy Awards, and that is Sunrise. I picked this up uh, blind buy. Don't really know much about it, but it just it looks like a classic. I've heard many fantastic things about the film, so yeah, I'll have to check this one out soon. And I've been wanting to what do you call it? I've been wanting to I don't know just improve my I wanted to collect all the Best Picture Blu-rays that Oscars have won. So yeah, this is definitely one of them. And yeah, Sunrise. Can't wait to watch it. And last but not least for the January haul, I have the Underworld Legacy Collection. Um, now, I haven't seen any of these films. Uh, they were recommended to me when Blood Wars came out. I'm going to check them out soon. They just look so much like so much fun. But yeah, it comes with uh, the, all f the first four films here. Uh, obviously not including the fifth one since it just came out. But I think it's having a re Blu-ray release in March. But yeah, the uh, Underworld Legacy Collection. Uh, I can't wait to watch these films. They look like a lot of fun. Alright, that is it for the January haul. Let's get into the movies that I picked up in February. Alright, to, so to start the February haul off, I'll show the uh, steelbooks that I uh, got in a trade that I did with a fellow blue tuber, uh, Stefan Moon. He goes as many different aliases on YouTube, such as A Clockwork Stefan and Blu-ray Man. Uh, but yeah, he's an awesome guy. Definitely go check his channel out. Um, I'll have the link to his, uh, what do you call it? I'll have the link to his channel down below. But yeah, he sent me three uh, steelbooks that we don't have here in America. And and yeah, uh, they're very awesome, and I can't wait to show these to you guys. So, first off, we have Gone with the Wind. Uh, Gone with the Wind I've actually never seen, so I'm going to have to watch it soon. It looks like a classic. Well, it is a classic, but it uh, looks like I'll love it. So, I can't wait to check it out. This is just such an awesome steelbook. And yeah, thank you, Stefan, for picking Gone with the Wind up for me. Next one he got was he got me was a history of violence. A uh, history of violence. It's a David Cronenberg film. Stars Viggo Mortensen, and it's just awesome. Go check it out if you haven't. Uh, but yeah, this is such an awesome steelbook. Uh, I don't know, just so awesome. It's a glossy steelbook, and it's just awesome. It really, I don't know. I, there's just something about the steelbook I love. It's probably one of my favorites that I have in my collection, to be honest with you. And last but not least, what, what I got in the trade is Godzilla 3D. Uh, you know, Kong, uh, Skull Island's coming out soon. It's getting fantastic reviews from what I've heard. I've heard. I've actually heard that it's actually maybe the next Fury Road, which is awesome. So I can't wait to check it out. Uh, looks like a lot of fun. But it's in the same universe as Godzilla. The 20. This is the 2014 uh, version of the film. And yeah, this is an awesome steelbook as well. There's the inside. It comes with both Blu-ray and uh, Blu-ray 3D. Do not own a 3D TV, however, but hey, the Blu-ray will do, and this is just an awesome steelbook. So, Stefan, thank you so much for doing the trade, man. Uh, you know what? It's just awesome. Subscribe to Stefan if you haven't. He's a really awesome guy, so yeah. Going along with the Best Picture theme, I picked up quite a few more uh, Best Picture films this month. I guess I'll go with the three that I found at a Best Buy kiosk, actually. They were like the Oscar winners from the past few years. Or not past few years, but uh, previous years. Uh, so we have... Rain Man, uh, starring Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman. Uh, this is just a, such a phenomenal film, uh, and yeah, Dustin Hoffman's performance is outstanding in this, and so is Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is very good in this as well. But yeah, it's just such an awesome movie, and it's just such a such a heartwarming tale. So if you haven't seen Rain Man, check it out. 
up next is a Woody Allen film. Uh, I can't wait to get into his movies because they seem kind of strange and quirky, but I feel like I'll really like them. This is Annie Hall. Uh, this is arguably his most famous film besides Manhattan. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch it. It looks awesome. And last but not least is probably the probably the scariest movie I got out of the whole haul this uh, this month. It is Silence of the Lambs. Uh, this stars um, Anthony Hopkins. Who is his performance is just brilliant as Hannibal Lecter and Jodie Foster. As I try to what do you call it? He's uh, well, I'm pretty sure you guys all know the plot, but I'll just explain it real quick. He's what do you call it? He was a he was a cannibal and he's in prison and. Just to the gist of it, I haven't seen it in a long time, but he's in prison, and Jodie Foster's a detective, and she's trying to uncover the uh, bu Buffalo Bill murders. He's like, um, what do you call it? He's just, he's like a serial killer. And yeah, she she thinks that uh, Anthony Hopkins may have some methods to help her, help her track down Buffalo Bill, and it's just an awesome movie. The guy who played Buffalo Bill... Man, is that some freaky stuff, especially with the night vision goggles in the end. But, man, is this movie fantastic. Uh, if you guys haven't seen it, check it out. Up next is a film that I recently watched this month, and man, did I I love this film. It was on Netflix. Um, I watched it a few years ago. I actually watched the first three minutes of it. Then I had, the, like, some obligation came up that I had to do or something. That, so I stopped the movie. The next day I came on, they took it off Netflix, so I never got to finish the movie. But, uh, yeah, they recently just put it back on, and that is The Graduate. Uh, the Graduate stars, again, Dustin Hoffman, and this is by far his fan greatest performance. Um, this is the Criterion release, by the way, and man, I just fell in love with this movie. Just so awesome, and that ending. The ending could be depicted in so many different ways, and I would just spend hours researching it, different theories and explanations for it. But man, uh, check out The Graduate if you haven't. Um, you know, uh, it has the famous si Simon Garf Garfunkel soundtrack, so check it out. It's, it's a masterpiece. Uh, I love this movie. Up next is I actually picked up a digi book uh, from Amazon. It was really cheap too. They are, they are, Amazon's like having a flash sale on all their digi books. They're like I don't know, 15 bucks or under. So get your hands on some while you can. I picked up one last month, and that is Chariots of Fire. Uh, Chariots of Fire is you know famous for the famous running scene. I'll insert a clip here. But yeah, Chariots of Fire, uh, this uh, won the 1982 Academy Awards, I believe. 1981, I'm sorry. Well, yeah, it would have won the 1982 Academy Awards. But yeah, Chariots of Fire, um, I have not seen this film yet, but it's I've heard it's very good, so I can't wait to watch it. Looks awesome. The Digi book is very detailed. And yeah, looks like an awesome movie. That is Chariots of Fire. And up next, the biggest upset in Oscar history. Uh, this, if you guys know about the Oscar controversy that happened a few days ago for the 2017 Oscars, you'll know that, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff went down. What do you call it? I'll just do a brief run through real quick if you guys don't know what happened. La La Land, uh, they called La La Land for best picture and they made a mistake. It wasn't actually La La Land who won. It was actually Moonlight that won. And... Yeah, it was just I don't know. I felt bad for the people for La La Land, but but yeah, you know what they you know what they they declined their Oscars very very gracefully and very respectfully. They handed over their Oscars to the Moonlight uh, to the Moonlight crew, which is uh, which was very very nice. Um, they had very hand they handled that very situation very well. And yeah, what happened was they accidentally had the wrong card that said uh, Emma Stone for Moonlight on it, and they had just handed them the wrong card or and not Emma Stone for Moonlight, Emma Stone for La La Land on it, and they just gave him the wrong card when it was actually Moonlight that won Best Picture. But La La Land was my favorite film of the, uh, last year. I thought it was a masterpiece. But uh, I watched Moonlight, and I think it's absolutely incredible as well. It's my number five of last year. But, you know, I'm still happy that Moonlight won because it's an outstanding movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, uh, go watch it because it's fantastic. Um, 
what do you call it? This follows uh, Ki Kid uh, Chiron, and he grow. It follows him in three stages of his life. One's when he's a kid, another when he's a teenager, and one when he's an adult. It is just, it is just absolutely outstanding. Uh, what's his name? Marcel Ali. I'm sorry if I didn't pronounce your name. Mahershal Ali. Uh, won uh, Best Supporting Actor for this, and he did an outstanding job. He also did a good job in Hidden Figures, but uh, this is definitely where his performance shines the most. He did a fantastic job in this film. And also, the actors that played Chiron in all three stages of his life did an absolutely uh, fantastic job. But yeah, this is also released by A24, and uh, yeah, it's an outstanding film. And uh, yeah, go check out Moonlight if you haven't. Uh, now that we're talking about Oscar-related films, I might as well go, p I picked up a few of the nominees this year that won a few different Oscars, uh, but not Best Picture, but still were outstanding films that I think are worth your time. The first one I haven't seen all the way through, but it's Hell or High Water, um... From what I've seen in this film, this fil movie is fantastic. So, yeah, I can't really say much about it, though, but, um... What do you call it? When, when, when I finish the movie, I'll let you guys know what I thought about it. So yeah, that is Hell or High Water. Up next is Manchester by the Sea. Definitely the most depressing and most heavy film of last year. Uh, Casey Affleck pulls off the greatest performance of his career. He won uh, Best a Actor at the Oscars. And Lucas Hedges uh, did an absolutely outstanding job. He was by far like the standout role in this movie, in my opinion. Uh, he did a fantastic job. Uh... But yeah, guys, um, definitely just check out this film. It's very depressing and very heavy. Basically what happens, this isn't really a spoiler, but uh, Lee Chandler, um, played by Casey Affleck, uh, what he call has to go back to his hometown of Manchester uh, because his brother just recently passed away, and he has to find out uh, if who will take care of his uh, son that, um, that he left behind. And it's just... Very, very heart-wrenching tale. Uh, Michelle Williams does a fantastic job. And the ending is... It was absolutely... I didn't really like it when I left the theater at first. But after I thought about it, I, there's nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with this movie. Uh, but I s love this movie to death. Um, what do you call it? But Lee, he sort of has a, he sort of has a mysterious past that may lead him not want to stay in Manchester. So, it's just... It's just very interesting, and I just had such a fantastic time watching this. Uh, but yeah, I saw this in the theater, and it was it was incredible. So check it out if you haven't. It, uh, Manchester by the Sea is an absolute masterpiece. Up next, I recently just picked up a 4K TV, so I did pick up some uh, 4K Blu-rays. Uh, these two were nominated for Best Picture. First one is Mel Gibson's Hacksaw Ridge. Um, Hacksaw Ridge is one my favorite war film, probably of the 2000, 2010s, 2000s, uh, definitely the last decade. Uh, this is just such an uh, incredible film about Desmond Dawes, a pacifist in World War II, who never wanted to pick up a gun, and it's just an absolutely intense tale about how he saved I I don't know, I think it's... He saved 75 men uh, in his, um, when he was in the military, uh, single-handedly without no weapons or anything. And it's just an absolutely incredible tale. Mel Gibson did a fantastic job with this film. Uh, Andrew Garfield pulls off, again, the best performance of his career. Uh, he does such an outstanding job. And Vince Vaughn also does a fantastic job as well. And yeah, I just think that it's an absolutely incredible movie. If you guys haven't watched it, go check it out. And I'm sure it's going to look fantastic in 4K. Another film that was nominated for Best Picture was Arrival. Arrival is directed by D Denis Villeneuve. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, sir, but uh, he made a heck of a sci-fi movie with this. It's definitely very different. I can't say I've ever seen a twist like this in a movie before, but uh, man, was it very, very interesting. Uh, definitely a very different sci-fi film, but uh, it's Definitely very fantastic, and uh, Amy Adams is incredible in this movie. And yeah, if you haven't seen it, check it out. It's very, very good, and it's just um, it's uh, the cinematography is absolutely outstanding in this film. 
And last but not least, this film wasn't nominated for Best Picture or anything, but it was nominated, I believe, for Sound Mixing at the Oscars. Uh, forgive me if I'm wrong. But, yeah, that is Deepwater Horizon. This is a Peter Berg film. I actually received this film as a gift, so thank you uh, if you're watching this. Yeah, this is a film that I haven't seen yet, but from what I've heard, it's very good. Um, I just recently watched Peter Berg's Patriot's Day, which I thought was magnificent. I'll definitely be picking that one out when it comes out. And, yeah, uh, I've seen Lone Survivor, but I fell asleep during it, so I'll have to watch it again soon. But yeah, this is Deepwater Horizon, stars Marky Mark and John Malkovich, and yeah, it looks like an awesome time. Alright, final stretch here. We don't have too many left, but we'll talk about two films. This was uh, Best Buy released a new line of slipcovers. Uh, well, I don't think it was just Best Buy, but uh, Warner Brothers just released a new line of slipcovers called Monster Mayhem, and it's basically a bunch of, um, like, monster and sci-fi movies. So I picked up one of them. I picked up Pacific Rim since Pacific Rim 2 is coming out in July, I believe. Pacific Rim is directed by Guillermo del Toro, and uh, Guillermo del Toro also made the Hellboy movies as well as The Devil's Backbone and uh, Pan's Labyrinth, which is... I have not seen Pan's Labyrinth, but I'll check it out soon. But this movie just has an awesome slipcover to it. I really like the look of it. And yeah, um, yeah, I can't wait to watch this film. I, I think I might have caught bits and pieces on TV, but it looks like a lot of fun. And yeah, Ron Perlman is in it again, so yeah, we'll see how it is. I think it's going to be very good, and I think I'll have a lot of fun with it. So yeah, that is Pacific Rim. This one, uh, this is kind of my childhood right here. Um, if you, I grew up with Batman Beyond when I was younger. It was, um... Yeah, but Batman Beyond, they used to play reruns of Cartoon Net on Cartoon Network all the time when I was growing up. And yeah, this is definitely one of the one of my favorite Batman animated films just sort of from like a nostalgic standpoint, but that is Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Uh yeah, just uh, it's a really fun movie. Um if you, I mean, I don't know, I'm not going to recommend it if you guys don't think you'll be into it, but I really dig it. If you're a Batman fan, I'm sure you guys will like it. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's just really fun. Uh, I have a great time with it every time I watch it. Haven't seen it in a long time, which I actually think I'm going to rewatch this film right now. So, yeah, guys, uh, yeah, that's Batman Beyond Return of the Joker. Alright, up next is a film that I watched at a friend's house, and I never finished it, but it was so good that I wanted to finish it, so I picked it up on Blu-ray at a used video store, and it came with a slipcover that is Crazy Stupid Love. I wanted to watch, since, watch this since La La Land came out, and Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling are in this movie. And yeah, this movie was from, I've seen it halfway through. It's a lot of fun. It's uh, very good. It's definitely, it's kind of a fun rom-com, so check it out if you haven't. Um, um, I have a lot, I had a lot of fun with it, and I'm going to definitely finish watching this one soon. Up next is a blind buy. Uh, this was like for three bucks at FYE. That is Project X. Um, I've heard some fun things, and it's like a different uh, found footage movie, so I think I'll really enjoy it. It looks like a lot of fun. Up next is a DVD, and that is a Pink Floyd The Wall, one of the most messed up music videos that you'll ever see in your entire life. It's basically it's basically the trippiest version of the Beatles' Yellow Submarine that you'll ever see. And the, and the Beatles' Yellow Submarine is very strange itself, so... But this is even stranger, but I love Pink Floyd. They're one of my all-time favorite rock bands. So check, it, check this one out if you haven't. Uh, it's really cool, especially if you're a Pink Floyd fan. Up next at FYE again, I picked up uh, with the slipcover, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, the 25th anniversary. Uh, haven't seen this film, but I've heard many good things, so I'll check this one out soon. Up next is a Spike Lee movie, uh, Do the Right Thing. This was also five bucks at FYE. And uh, yeah, um, I can't wait to dive into Spike Lee's filmography. I think I believe I've seen Malcolm X before, but I'm going to rewatch it soon. Uh, but yeah, so Do the Right Thing, I heard this is one of his greatest films, so that is Do the Right Thing, directed by Spike Lee. And this, uh, this next film is one of the, one of the most depressing films that I've ever seen in my entire life, and one of the most brutal films I've ever seen in my entire life. That is American History X. Uh, this stars, uh, Eddie Furlong and Edward Norton, and 
man, was this movie intense. Uh, just very, very raw, and especially, especially the curb scene, if you guys know what I'm talking about. It was just, and it's an absolutely outstanding film, but just very, very brutal and raw, and that ending, oh my gosh, that, that was... That was that was a heck of a a heck of a way to end the film. Let me tell you that. Uh, but yeah, American History X. Uh, check it out if you haven't. It's not everybody's cup of tea. But uh, you know, and if you like Edward Norton, which is def this is definitely his best performance of his career, go check it out because it's absolutely outstanding. And yeah, guys, that is my complete haul for January and February of 2017. I'm going to have a few new videos out soon. And yeah, guys, I hope you enjoy it. I'm Gibson02, and I will see you guys later. Thanks, guys. To be honest, guys, I don't remember uh, which movies I picked up in March and April, so they're all going to be just a big mishmash. So yeah, let's get into it with the, f uh, the first movie I'm going to show you. It's Martin Scorsese's Silence. This is Martin Scorsese's new film, and to be honest, uh, it's, a, it's a very slow burner. I saw this back in the theater when it first came out in December, and I... Or not December, I think it was January actually, but I absolutely loved it. Uh, Silence is one of the greatest films of last year. It's my uh, number two film to be exact, and I absolutely love this film. It's just absolutely insane what these priests had to go to when they went to Japan. Uh, Andrew Garfield's character is definitely, and this is definitely one of Andrew Garfield's best performances. Behind, I have to say, Hacksaw Ridge, which is another fantastic film from last year. But yeah, Silence was absolutely incredible. Uh, Martin Scorsese does it again, and Adam Driver was just, he just nailed it. Uh, with Between Kylo Ren and this, I'd have to say that this is his best performance, but man, this movie is just absolutely incredible. The cinematography is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, the only problem that I have is that I wish it was nominated for a few more Oscars, but you know, that's okay. But anyway... Silence is awesome. This is an awesome release. Well, all, it, there's only one special feature. I guess that's the only flaw I have with this movie, but the slipcover is absolutely beautiful. I love the slipcover. It's like sort of has a matte finish, and yeah, it's awesome. So that is Martin Scorsese's Silence. Up next, I recently picked up a 4K uh, Blu-ray player, so I've got a few 4K UHD movies around uh, here and there. So I picked up uh, Peter Berg's Patriot's Day. This is in the unofficial Peter Peter Berg, Mark Wahlberg, Real Story uh, trilogy. Uh, but yeah, Patriot's Day is definitely the best one, I think, out of the trilogy. Um, just absolutely insane. This is based off, for those of you who don't know, this is based off the true stories of the Boston bombing when that happened back in 2013. And man, does just Peter Berg just capture the realism of it. It's just absolutely insane. And Mark Wahlberg does an outstanding job, and so does uh, J.K. Simmons and Kevin Bacon. They did a great job. But yeah, this was just such a heartbreaking film. It was uh, just, but it was absolutely a spectacular movie, and I recommend you guys go see it. It's very great. Uh, this is Peter Patriot's Day. Up next are two movie, uh, two movie, Disney movie, two packs that came out. Uh, they, these came out like, uh, I think March. And yeah, th these are two of my, uh, favorite Disney movies, to be honest with you. And I think they're very underrated, to be honest with you guys. They are Mulan 1 and 2 and Pocahontas 1 and 2. Um, I love both of these movies. Uh, Mulan is honestly one of my favorite Disney movies. I absolutely love the character. Mulan is just awesome. I love the atmosphere in the movie. It's just awesome. Mulan 2, and I think this is an unpopular opinion, but I think it's alright, actually. Um, yeah, but yeah, definitely check these out. They're worth watching. They're absolutely awesome. That is Mulan 1 and 2. Then I picked up Pocahontas 1 and 2. Um, haven't seen these in years, but I remember loving them. We had to watch them back in school, and we learned about Pocahontas. Like, that was, that was a really long time ago. Uh, but yeah, I think like in fourth grade, we learned about, uh, uh, Pocahontas, but anyway, Pocahontas 1 and 2, they're very good, well, 2's eh, but Pocahontas 1 I really like a lot, so yeah, that's Pocahontas 1 and 2 and Mulan 1 and 2. Up next, we have Ghost in the Shell 2, Innocence. Uh, I saw the new Ghost in the Shell, and I've seen the original Ghost in the Shell. I really like both of those movies, but I haven't gotten around to watching this one yet. Let me know how it is in the comments below.
Up next is one of the sequels in the Alien franchise that I didn't have. Uh, that is Alien 3. Um, I don't own all the Alien movies as of yet. Uh, the only ones I do own are 1, 2, and Alien 3. But yeah, I just watched Alien 2 uh, as of filming this. Last night I watched it. and Or not Alien 2, Alien 3. And uh, I have to say, I watched. I remember watching the theatrical cut years ago and just not liking it. But I watched Alien 3 the... I believe it's a special edition producer's cut last night. It was absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I don't know. There was just something about it that just really... I don't know. I just loved it for some reason. I'd give it like a 4 out of 5 stars. But um, Alien 3 is just awesome. The first Alien is like a horror movie. The second Alien is an ac Aliens is an action movie. This one is sort of like a thriller. And I think David Fincher did a good job with... Uh, the special edition, the, thea thea the theatrical cut, yes, does have, have its problems, but I do feel like a lot of those problems were cleaned up in the special edition, so definitely check the special edition out if you're sort of skeptical about Alien 3. Uh, that's definitely the right way to go for this one. I remember picking these two up in March. They are uh, one new release, uh, Jackie and Unforgiven. Haven't seen either of these films, but I hear that they're phenomenal. Unforgiven is, uh, looks awesome. It looks like a good uh, Clint Eastwood movie. My grandpa recommended this one to me, so I'll check this one out soon. Then Jackie, this is uh, Natalie Portman as uh, Jackie Kennedy, and uh, I haven't watched it yet, but it looks real very good. I uh, Peter Sarsgaard's in this as well, who was in Garden State. For those of you who don't know, but just an absolutely beautiful slipcover. Uh, opens up like this. It's just very very cool. I love it. Uh, yeah, I can't wait to watch this one. Uh, but yeah, it looks awesome. Can't wait to see it. And another movie came out this month. This is a Target exclusive special edition that is of Star Wars Rogue One. Um, I thought Rogue One was alright in the theater. I feel like it definitely needs a rewatch, and I definitely will get around to it soon. Uh, but yeah, um, uh, you know, I did, really did enjoy it, and Be Ben Mendelsohn was fantastic in it, although he wasn't in it too much. Uh, and you know what, I also thought Felicity Jones did a fantastic job as well. But yeah, this is the Target exclusive edition. Yeah, as you, you take this nice slip box off. Very cool. Inside here, it's like a little window. There are a bunch of postcards and stuff that you could change them out to. I changed it out to the Ben Mendelsohn one. But there's also one of like uh, uh, Diego Luna and Felicity Jones and stuff that you could switch it out to. And also the For Force Whitaker and uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy who played IP Man, I'll put a annotation down below. But yeah, anyway, this is a very cool addition. Opens up like this. And yeah, it comes with, I believe it comes with the original Blu-ray, it comes with a few bonus discs, and it comes with a Blu-ray 3D as well, which is awesome. Uh, the digital code's already been used if you guys saw it, but yeah, this is an awesome edition of Star Wars Rogue One. I'm definitely uh, going to give it a rewatch soon. Um, I enjoyed it in theaters, and I need to watch it again. Still think that Force Awakens is like one of the best Star Wars movies in my opinion, but yeah, Rogue One, still solid, and I'll definitely be ch getting around to this one again soon. Alright guys, we're getting to the last few here. Uh, this month I uh, discovered a director that I didn't think I would really like, but to be honest guys, I watched uh, I watched half of his movies, and I absolutely fell in love with the director. His name is Terrence Malick. Uh, he is one of the, probably one of the most uh, visionary directors, I would say, of the past 30 years. Um, I love pretty much all of his work so far that I've seen, and the ones that I have seen are... Uh, these are re released on Criterion. Uh, Badlands and Days, in, Days of Heaven. Uh, I'm just going to talk about these two for now. Badlands was really great. It stars, uh, it stars Martin Sheen and uh, the girl who played Carrie. Uh, Sissy Spacek, Sissy Spacek, uh, but yeah, she, uh, this is just a fantastic movie, it's about uh, Martin Sheen and Sissy Spacek as they run away uh, from their hometown, and it is just, it's just an awesome movie, um, it's just a very simple storyline, and the more and more I think about Badlands, I liked it enough already, but the more and more I think about Badlands, the more and more I like it, so I'm definitely going to have to give this one a rewatch soon, I really enjoyed it, and you know, Criterion, they always do do the treatment, as we open this up here, comes with a nice uh, inside artwork and the disc and then a very nice booklet inside which gives you more information about the film. 
Now, a movie that I liked more than Badlands, and this is definitely an unpopular opinion, but it is Days of Heaven. Days of Heaven stars Richard Gere, and uh, I love this movie. There's just, it's sort of a slow burner, it's a slow burner, but I don't know, there was just something about it that was just so incredible to me and breathtaking. This, definitely the cinematography and Terrence Malick's work is just absolutely captivating, and that's what keeps you, that's what keeps you engaged throughout all his films, is just a, a glorious and beautiful cinematography. Uh, but yeah, this uh, Days of Heaven, uh, Days of Heaven's a pretty pretty cool story. Um, well, not, it's not really all that interesting uh, the story, but uh, but I just still really really love this movie. And it's about uh, he's a, it's about Richard Gere. He works in I believe this is in uh, pre depression era era of Chicago. He works in a, pl a plant like a mill, a steel mill, and he uh, accidentally kills his boss. And from what I remember, he accidentally kills his boss, and then he runs away to the Great Plains, and it's just, it, it's an absolutely fantastic movie. Uh, what's the Great Plains? But yeah, Days of Heaven is just an absolutely uh, fantastic movie. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. The performances are absolutely incredible, so definitely check this one out. It's fantastic. Then my absolute favorite uh, Terrence Malick film is The Tree of Life. Now, this definitely needs a Criterion release. Like, my God, it totally does need a Criterion release. I, words can't express how much I love this movie. It's like my ninth favorite of all time right now. And it's just absolutely a beautiful movie. It's just, it just feels so real. And it's just something about it. Just It just so many questions and there are so many hidden metaphor metaphors and things that just in Ter Terrence Malick's movies that you could honestly just spend days and days looking up and it's just absolutely insane um D uh, Tree of Life is definitely my favorite of his it's just a beautiful beautiful film and if you have not seen it I implore you to check it out it's absolutely wonderful it just talks about like death and life and stuff like that and like it's sort of it's sort of uh it's just it's just absolutely phenomenal. If you guys have not seen it, definitely check out uh, The Tree of Life. And the, per the performances are all solid. Brad Pitt and Jessica Chastain's are just out of this world. Sean Penn's not in it too much, but he does a good job. And the kids in the movie. The kid who plays young Sean Penn, my god, he did an absolutely outstanding job. And yeah, Tree of Life, 5 out of 5 stars. It is a, a beautiful movie, so definitely check it out. The other D Terrence Malick movie that I saw was To the Wanderer. Uh, I haven't gotten around to picking that one up yet, but I definitely will soon, because I really did like it. The two Terrence Malick movies that I did not see yet were The New World and The Thin Red Line. Heard a lot of great things about these. Uh, Colin Farrell's in The New World and just a bunch of people are in The Thin Red Line, so I'll check them out soon. They're just very long, so I'll get around to them sometime. My favorite movie... Uh, of 2016 and one of my favorite movies of all time. It's my favorite musical that probably gives it away but La La Land was a film that impacted me in so many different ways and I can't, words can't express how much I love it. it La La Land's basically the reason I want to make movies. The drive and ambition about, I don't know, just maybe making it somewhere in the entertainment industry. It's just absolutely just breathtaking about what Damien Chazelle has made with this beautiful film. Uh, I picked up, I love the movie so much that I picked up all five editions that were released in America. I know I'm crazy for doing that, but I just love this movie so much, and I just wanted to own every single edition. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, I picked up, this one was definitely the hardest to find. I had to pre-order this one online because it was uh, going out of stock everywhere, and that was the, the Steelbook, the Best Buy exclusive Steelbook. Uh, one of the best Steelbooks to come out in uh, the, the this year so far, in my opinion. Just I love the colors. I love the white with the blue, and then on the back, just very awesome. Uh, and by the way, Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone did an excellent job. I gave this coat away. Uh, but yeah, on the inside, you know, it's got, uh, you have the normal DVD and the Blu-ray. And then in the background, it's uh, Ryan and Emma dancing on the Los Angeles, uh, uh, on the hills of Los Angeles. It, it, but yeah, this movie is just absolutely incredible. And there's just the music and the choreography just are absolutely inc uh, just blend together so well and the ending the ending I'll be completely honest I the ending was absolutely 
beautiful yet heartbreaking and uh it's just so fantastic um go check out la la land i'm sure pretty much everybody has already but just watch this movie watch this movie if you don't love movies watch this movie but because it is just absolutely beautiful um i love it so much it's just it's so it's just it basically describes the, uh, the reason i want to make movies uh one day and uh, yeah la la land absolutely phenomenal i'll show you guys all the other editions that i picked up too this is the Walmart exclusive. The only thing different about this is that it's just an exclusive slipcover. I really like this edition. Didn't know it came out until release day, however. Uh, then this is the Target exclusive edition. This has a different slipcover on it, and it comes with a bonus disc. And by the way, I did watch all the special features, uh, pretty much all the special features on uh, uh, the La La Land Blu-ray. Uh, the only thing I didn't check out was the bonus disc and the commentary by, uh, I think it was Dav Damien Chazelle and uh, Justin Hurwitz, the... Uh, the composer, which the compo the composition of this movie is just absolutely incredible. The score is just mind blowing. Uh, but yeah, uh, this is the Target exclusive. Next one, this is the normal edition. It's pretty much, you know, the any copy that you'd see pretty much everywhere. And this is the 4K Ultra HD edition, which I'm sure just looks absolutely insane in 4K. So I'll definitely be watching it soon. So anyway, guys, those were my pickups for January through April of 2017. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope you guys enjoyed my comeback uh, to YouTube. It, it, you know, it's good. To, it feels good to be back, and I will definitely be putting out videos more constantly now. Now that school's ending, and yeah, we're just. I'm just gonna. I I don't know. I just missed YouTube these past. I missed it so much these past four months, and so I'm just going to definitely try to make an effort to uh, make make some really good videos for you guys, and I hope you guys enjoy them. So anyway, guys, stick around. I'm going to be coming back real soon, so I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.